Hi, 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 welcome to Codeo. This is day 15 of 100 days of code, and the question for today is called the count pair sum. Okay, let me just read the question first and we'll try to move on to the approach and finally do the coding part. Okay, so given two sorted arrays, they have come up and straight away told you that you are given two arrays and they are sorted. Okay, and they are of size m and n. Fine. Of distinct elements, so there are no duplicates in these array. So we have got a lot of information just from one sentence. We are given two arrays, they are of size m and n, and they are sorted arrays, and there are no duplicate values in them. Okay, fine. We are moving on to the next statement. Give a value sum, given a value sum, you are also given another value called sum. The problem is to count all pairs, both arrays, whose sum is equal to sum. Okay, so I, I think that might be a confusing statement. So what they are trying to tell is that you have to pick one element from one array, another element from another array, and you have to find a combination where uh, their sum, the numbers you have picked, right? So their sum should be equal to the sum variable that you are given with. Okay, we'll see one example and you'll understand it way better. So uh, let me just grab my digitizer. Okay, fine. So in this case, you have an input where m values 4, n values 4 and sum values 10, right? So we are given arrays, two arrays of size 4 and we are given the value of sum as 10. So these arrays are 1, 3, 5, 7 and 2, 3, 5, 8. Now uh, let me just uh, write this array here, 1, 3, 5, 7 and 2, 3, 5, 8 and as you can see both these are just sorted arrays. Now you are supposed to pick two values right you are supposed to pick two values and see if they are uh, adding up to the sum variable right. So uh, let me just pick these two values 1 and 3 when you add them you just get 4 which is less than your sum value so it is not a right pair. Now one more example where they are actually the right pair is, uh, where is it, okay, so 3 and 7, right, 3 and 7 adding up they gave 10 as the sum and uh, it is the required sum that we need, okay, so it is one possible output that you need, another one could be 5 and 5, right, You here you have a 5, here you have another 5 and when you add both these together you get 10 which is also your desired sum, so this is what you are going to do and uh, one approach where uh, you could use hash map, right? So you can hash all values from one array to hash map and see uh, if you if you can form an uh, form a combination where you are getting the desired sum. But here we are given that you are not supposed to use extra memory. Okay, so you're not supposed to use extra memory, and this is a sorted array. So you can come up with one single or uh, one simple approach where you are going to have two pointers, right? Pointers in the sense they are not the literal pointers, they are just variables to uh, point at the indices, right? So uh, we are going to have one pointer here and let me just name it i, right? And I'm going to have another one here and I'm just going to name it j, okay, fine. And we are supposed to return the total number of such possible pairs. So I am going to create a variable called pairs, pairs and I am just going to initialize it to 0, ok. So we have a variable called pairs which is initialized to, which is initialized to 0 and we have two pointer variables 1 uh, i and j and the, the i variable is starting from the initial index or the starting index of the first array, j variable is starting from the ending index of the second array. You will know why we are doing this in a little bit but ok. So, yeah, here we are. Okay, so now we are going to check the sum value. Okay, your current value sum, right? Not the variable that you are supposed to meet. Uh, your current value sum. Okay, so you have 1 here, you have 8 here. So, 1 plus 8 gives you 9. Okay, so current value of sum is 9. And as you can see, it is less than the sum value. Okay, it is not the uh, desired value. Okay, so what you are going to do is that you are going to increment the value of i and make it to point to the next element. Okay, why are we doing this? 
the arrays that we have are sorted arrays right so when you go from left to right the values would be would be increasing and when you go from right to left it should be decreasing right so the sum of 1 and 8 gives you 9 which is less than the required sum so you are going to increase the values involved in this array involved in this sum action and uh, try to come up with another sum which is closer to our sum value right so that is the logic i hope you understood this what i'm trying to tell is that you have, you have 1 plus 8 here right 1 plus 8 gives you 9 which is less than your sum value which is 10 okay so what you what you can do is that 8 is the maximum value present in the second array because we are starting from the last in the second array and 1 is the least value that is present in the first array so what you can do is that you can replace this 8 with next small element and see if that comes up with the required sum so we are replacing 1 with 3 right so now 3 plus 8 gives you what 3 plus 8 gives you 11 and 11 as you know is greater than 10 right so 11 is greater than 10 and that is not what we want we need the exact amount right so 11 is greater than 10 so what you're going to do is that you're going to decrement the value of j so j is the pointer variable that we use to point at the second array right one that we are traversing from right to left so we are decrementing j because this is the major contributor right so uh, i i only moves to the right j moves to the left okay so in order for you to decrease the value you have to move to the left so you are decrementing the value of j so instead of 8 j becomes 5 now okay so the current value of j is 5 and uh, the sum gives you 8 which is less than your required value which is 10 okay so 8 is less than 10 so when when it is less than 10 what you are going to do you are going to increment the value of i right so now i moves to the next index pointing 5 okay so now the sum is 5 plus 5 and it is your required value okay 5 plus 5 is equal to 10 it is not less than 10 it is equal to 10 so in that case you can increment the value of pairs so instead of 0 now the value of pairs become 1 right and similarly you are going to do this up until the i variable reaches that end and the j variable reaches this end right so uh, if i reaches here and j reaches here you can then stop okay so this is what you are going to do and you you will increment the value of pairs whenever you encounter a desirable sum okay so this is the logic so hope you got some idea now we'll move to geeks for geeks and try to program this so here we are in geeks for geeks and i'll leave the link to this question in the description you can try it out after watching this video so as we already saw we are given the two arrays and m and n their sizes and fine 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 okay so you are going to create two variables right one is i which is going to start from the left of the first array so i is created and it is initialized to 0 and another one is j and it is going to start from the end of the second array right and the size of second array is n so n would be n minus 1 because we are using 0 based indexing so these are the conditions now we are given the required sum which is the variable x and to calculate the current sum you can have another variable called sum okay so now we'll just going to we're just going to iterate through this arrays right so i'm just going to use a while loop for that and the conditions would be i less than m okay and j greater than or equal to 0 so why are these conditions there okay so these are the edge conditions where you would come out of the loop i less than m meaning the first array is over right i has reached the end of first array and j greater than or equal to 0 means the second array is over j has reached the beginning of the second array because we started from the last position right so these are the basic conditions and you are going to check if array 1 of i plus array 2 of j 
is equal to x right we are going to check if array 1 of i plus array 2 of j equals x in that case you can increment the value of pairs but you should have created a variable called pairs at the beginning i haven't done so so i am creating it now okay so we have created the value of uh, pairs and initialized it to 0 and whenever you encounter a pair where the sum adds up to your desired value we are going to increment the value of pairs okay and you can move the i pointer to the right and you can move the j pointer to the left because the current pair has been found and it has been added so you can move both these pointers away right because there are no duplicates here so there is no point in having these numbers because they will never produce a similar pair again with these two numbers right so we have we are moving j and i both these are moved okay so this next condition that you are going to check is that if array of array 1 of i plus array 2 of j is less than x okay so instead of writing this array 1 plus array 2 you can have it initialized to a sum variable and you can use it as well that is quite simpler i started writing this so it's fine okay so if it is smaller than your required sum you are just going to increment the value of i okay and else meaning that it is greater than your required sum you are going to decrement the value of j and at the very end you are just going to return the value pairs okay so that is it so hope you understood this now we'll try to run this and see if it works so all test cases have passed hope you understood this logic if you have any questions put them in the comments and i'll get back to you and uh, if you have completed this post it on linkedin and tag me i'll probably get to see it okay thank you so much for watching D see you Choo. sorry sorry for the blabber i am not quite right now okay so thank you so much for watching see you on tomorrow's episode of 100 days of code bye for now